Gay marriage back in the national debate after a leading Republican comes out. Ken Melman, who carried, chaired rather the RNC and ran President Bush's 2004 campaign, says he came to terms with his identity only recently. And he tells The Atlantic, quote, it has taken me 43 years to get comfortable with that part of my life. The process has been something that has made me a happier and better person. It's something I wish I had done years ago. Let's bring in Charles Moran, vice chairman of the California Log Cabin Republicans. And here in studio, we have Joe Jervis, blogger on JoeMyGod.com and the East Coast editor of Pride Magazine. Gentlemen, thanks for joining us. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Uh, Charles, I'll begin with you. Ken Melman, now the highest profile national Republican to reveal that he is gay, but he did so only after years of working against the same-sex initiatives. Do you think he owes gay Americans an apology? Well, I think that Ken has come to this realization in his life, like so many other Americans do later in his life. Part of what his portfolio was with the Bush administration, this was one part of his campaign responsibilities that was very much orchestrated by Karl Rove and others. But Ken has really done an extremely good job of trying to advocate within the Republican Party an air of tolerance and inclusion. And I think that's one of the lasting effects of Ken Melman's involvement in the 2004 campaign and as leader of the Republican National committee is hmm. his work to try to continually keep the Republican Party <coughs> away from some of these socially divisive issues post-2004. What, what, what do you think Joe Melman says he wants to now be an advocate for gay marriage? Do you credit him for his decision now? Absolutely not. We've known that Ken Melman has been, was gay for many years. Uh, he's been protected by the mainstream media who wanted to uh, protect their ac access to the Bush White House. Ken Melman is nothing short of a 21st century Roy Cohn, a person who put ambition and a lust for power ahead of the lives, livelihoods, and civil rights of millions of his fellow gay Americans. Uh, he has a long, long road of amends and apologies before he can be but remotely turned into any sort of hero. How about, though, from this point forward, do you think his voice will help same-sex initiatives, adding his voice to that chorus? That remains to be seen, and, and obviously all of us hope it does. He does. But, you know, you have to look at the guy's history. You know, this is a guy who's walking up to our door, ringing the bell, and wanting us to welcome him at a, pla at a place at our table, and he's been trying to burn down the house for, for his entire professional career. This is not somebody that, you know, you, you definitely want out there speaking on your behalf. Hmm. Charles, I'm curious, do you think that Melman's revelation will encourage other Republicans to, to, to come out? Do you think that we'll be hearing from some conservatives uh, on this line at this point who've been vocal against gay marriage? Well, at this point, you have been hearing from conservatives across the spectrum and from people on the gay right who are saying that this is a welcome addition to the continued cacophony of voices of, and diversity within the gay and lesbian movement. When you've got such stellar spokespeople for gay marriage and gay rights like Dick Cheney, Mary Madeline, Ted Olson, and now Ken Melman, there is so much diversity within the conservative movement and acceptance of gay marriage and gay and lesbian issues. And that's just something that the, the radical gay left can't handle, especially Especially when the leader of their own party doesn't support mm. marriage equality. Mm. Okay. Um, gentlemen, I'm sorry, that's going to be a wrap right there. We were a little tight on time due to a lot of coverage with the Titanic, but Charles Moran and Joe Jervis, thank you so much.